Hello and welcome to the next installment of App Developer Conversations. I'm here with Ian Sefferman of Mobile Dev HQ and Ryan Morrell of PlacePlay. So today we're going to talk a little bit about smart app banners. Uh, as most people are aware, um, with the release of iOS 6, you can now put tags in uh, your content on the web that will launch a smart app banner on mobile Safari. So for most viewers of your um, website on a, an iOS device, you have the opportunity to show them sort of something smarter and that shows them their, their app and makes it easier to download. Along with that comes the um, announcement that they're going to be able to, you can put a tag called app argument into that smart app banner. And so that's pretty interesting from the tracking perspective because you can pass data through. So Ian, why don't you kick it off and talk to us about the ways in which passing this data along can be really interesting to app developers. Yeah, I think the in, in my world, the most interesting way to use that app argument is as a, a, a sort of a refer, uh, if you were to go from the web perspective, right? So attribution is obviously broken in the in the app ecosystem. There are, there are people like has offers mobile app tracking who have done some really interesting stuff there, but fundamentally it's still broken. And having this gives you at least some amount of, of the ability to track where a user comes from. So you could, you know, you could use this to say, you know, app attribute refer equals <coughs> Google keyword XYZ, and then actually see where they come through straight from Google. Or you could see, you know, website, Facebook, or, or whatever, and, the, and start tracking it down that way. And obviously it's only gonna give you those who came through your website, but it's better than nothing. Um, so attribution is probably the, the biggest thing I think of. So digging in a little bit, uh, does it mean that if you did this well as an app developer, you could es essentially establish like a landing page on your site for campaigns you ran, like a Google AdWords campaign or Facebook ads that are all going to the same landing page and then you can pass along referrers? Yeah, and that's the way that I understand it. So you know, you, you're gonna have to, if, if I was a developer, I would, I would basically do that on, on a sampling of my campaigns, right? Where it's, it's you're going to have, you're going to have a drop off because there's in, increased friction now, right? Yeah. Um, so your ad campaigns and, and, and anything like that is going to be less effective overall. But, uh, but I think that if you were to do that to say five or 10% of your, of your ad campaigns, uh, that would be a very interesting way for you to get metrics on which campaigns are performing the best. Yeah. Um, and then once you know the answers to those those questions, you can then drop out that that intermediate section and focus only on the ones that work well. Um, and with you know, go back to it in a month and try again or something like that, right? Yeah. And what about you? What do you see from your business, from the advertising business? Could this be helpful? Would you want to implement this for advertisers or for any of the publishers that you're dealing with? Uh, I've been thinking about it. I think the answer is I'm not sure um, because we kind of know already um, what apps serve what ad, whether or not they click and whether or not they install it. Um, so I'm, I'm not quite sure I understand what the value would necessarily be. Um, I mean, I think we can always pull some additional data that, you know, to codify the existing data that we already get. Like maybe we pull, um, device, past device lot long or time into those downloads. Um, but we kind of already get all that stuff, so I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, ultimately, I think the, the benefit is to developers here, because then they can start to be smarter over time about where they're showing their own ads. So, you know, it's, it's great that I know this information. Um, I think developers just have uh, sometimes natural mistrust of ad networks, right? And are these guys really being honest with me? Um, and this, eventually they'll roll this out um, across apps too, right? That makes perfect sense. Um, and then developers can start to do their own testing and their own tracking. And I think that's a really good thing. Yeah, I, I think that sometimes um, Apple sort of just starts a tree of possibility and this might be the start of them coming out with some attribution. I could definitely see them starting to do more now that They've got Chomp inside. Chomp's probably, that team is probably more focused on how do we make the app store better. I could see them starting to roll into more of a metrics and here's, here's the tail and how it uh, hits your, your, your various assets and how they convert, yeah. uh, which would be great for everybody, right? And one thing that's interesting about this, I think, is that they implemented it as, as meta tags rather than 
which basically it restricts it to only people who have the latest Safari that supports it, rather than a, you know a JavaScript snippet that could have gone on any any browser. So you know I I use Chrome in my on my iOS browser. Um, my guess is you know maybe it knows how to do it because it's using the same renderer, but I'm not sure. Right. Right. Yeah. I think potentially the interesting thing here um, for the long term is I believe that Apple wants to really provide a single solution for developers because it's clear that their ecosystem is, what, is what's going to drive hardware sales down the line. Um, and by providing developers not only the hardware platform and the users, but also all the tools they need to promote and close the loop on their marketing budget, that's, that's a pretty locked in platform right there. Right. Um, that both developers and users will keep coming back to it. Maybe that maybe it's a starting point. I don't know. But it seems like it. I think um, so. One last piece on the, this topic. The in, there's another interesting piece that uh, could happen. So if you're passing along this argument and you as the developer know in your code that different arguments mean people are coming from different places or searching for different things, you could tailor that first experience in the app and say, "Hey, welcome. Thanks for you know. It looked like you were looking for um, uh, you know recipes for." this cocktail or something, so here it is in our app. And you could actually get pretty sophisticated. I don't know how many people will do that near term, but it'd be great, I think, if developers started to make sure that that, that flow of discovery and desire is then satisfied in the first experience with an app, because as we all know, most apps aren't used more than two or three times. So that first experience being really relevant would be huge. Yep. Can you do that? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Know that. <laughs> um, I actually think that that would that would fundamentally probably help your business as well yeah. in terms of like it, it sounds like it would make engagement a lot stronger, uh, which is something that yes you, you're deep in absolutely. So uh, anything that makes this easier and better gives you more context about your app user seems to be like a great thing. Yeah, awesome. So make sure to uh, join us for the next installment in App Developer Conversations with Ian. How pissed would you be if in 18 months from now, you can no longer get your software? Uh, how pissed would I be? Not as pissed as I would be if certain political candidates get elected. <laughs>